Hello, and welcome to this dialogue webinar. Today, I'm going to be talking about some new user commands, which are available in dialogue version 18.2. So you may well know this, but just in case, uh, user commands are these commands that begin with a square bracket and they they can be used in the session typically you know when you're developing code experimenting or debugging an application um, and you know they're an easy way to do a variety of useful tasks the set here that have been introduced or are available with dialogue 18 2 are mainly concerned with uh, inspecting the contents of your workspace um, bringing code into your workspace and data and seeing the representation of APL items be they arrays or functions or other things uh, in a variety of different formats for some different purposes so I'm going to talk about these first four um, view which is for you know, viewing the results of some expressions, uh, listing names, the apple cart interface, and wrapper. Um, but this last one, get, is quite involved. It's to do with getting code and data into the workspace, and there are lots of different ways of doing this from lots of different sources in different formats. So that's getting its own webinar next time. Okay, so let's start uh, and talk about the output.view user command. So this is for um, basically letting you view the result of some APL expression in a read-only editor window. So it's fairly simple uh, in concept, um, but we'll see why it could be quite useful. Before I talk about that, Exactly, it's sort of worth mentioning that um, you're likely going to want to use this to see multiple things at the same time. And in the default dialog window mode with the docked windows, uh, this can be a little bit awkward to do. So you might want to go to Options, Configuration, and select Classic Dialog Mode uh, if you get to use this for these purposes because in classic dialog mode, separate edit windows or you know edit windows for multiple different items uh, will have their own independent window. And you can move those around um, you know, to be able to see things side by side, however you wish. This is not quite uh, such an issue in Ride because you know the default here if you have multiple edit windows like this, you can just click and drag those and they kind of tile quite nicely so you can see things side by side. But that's just a little pointer if you're in the Windows IDE. I'm oh, sorry, I'll leave that for a second. So one thing that uh, this is particularly useful for is inspecting long output. So you might already be aware of the rows user command this is a user command that basically allows you to truncate long output in the session. So for example, for this, you know, thousand row matrix, I might not necessarily want a thousand rows of output uh, polluting my session log. So here it truncates it, puts some dots in an appropriate place and lets you see kind of the top and bottom of the output. And this is fine if all you want to see is kind of the, the get the gist of, of your output. You want to make sure it's got about the right structure, um, you know, the right columns in the right place, and the data looks about right, but you don't care, you know, about something specific in the middle. But if you do want to uh, view a specific bit of data in the middle of that long output or something there, well, then you have to turn rows off uh, and then you will have something really long in your session log, so that can be a bit inconvenient. With the view user command, you can just conveniently pop up a separate editor window 
In here we have this five dimensional array of indices and in that separate edit window you can scroll around and you can look at some detail in the middle, whatever you need to do. Another thing that's useful about these view windows is they're sort of read-only snapshots of APL items at the time that you provide the expression. So for example, say you have, you know, some variable that you define and that variable is going to be modified over the course of your application. You can open up a view window and see uh, the state of the variable at some time. In a regular edit window, if I modify this variable, then that new state of the contents of the variable is going to be updated in the edit window. So I've lost what the value was before, but the view window retains that old value. And from there, after modifying, like in this case, you know, changing the first three uh, characters, I can open a regular edit window and sort of see them side by side, or I could open you know, another view window, you can open as many of these as you want, uh, and you could see, you know, the state of some variable over uh, a bunch of different modifications, for example. But it's uh, not just arrays that you can do this with. Um, you know, you can do this with all kinds of APL items. And for example, I don't know, maybe you're refact you want to refactor some function, uh, you can use a view window on a function name and you'll get you know a read-only window of the definition of that function so then you could for example have the old definition on one side and you know the current thing that you're editing on the other side and you can uh, refactor your code while seeing these two versions side by side all in the dialog IDE one last thing that's uh, Kind of useful for view in terms of not cluttering up your session log is that there's now a new modifier for the boxing user command you can put minus view equals and then one of the styles so uh, you can find the styles in the box user command help there none min mid and max and so you could have um, none or min boxing styles for your session output so it's not so big even for some deeply nested structures, but you could have view equals max. And just a reminder that user command modifiers uh, let you have, you know, an abbreviated version if there's no name conflict there. So you could have, you know, your session log be min and the view windows be max. And so that way, if you, you know, still you want to see the structure precisely of some nested array then you'd be able to inspect that you know in a similar way to the uh, bracket display output with max boxing uh, without that filling up your session log so that's the view user command names kind of even more simple it's for listing names within a namespace um, but in particular having a bit nicer uh, view of them. So this was actually uh, inspired by a utility function Ray Cannon showed us um, to do something similar. So we thought that's quite useful. In particular, if you have, you know, a namespace with loads of functions in it, or, you know, a big flat workspace structure to your application. I mean, this is even useful um, if you do have a nested, you know, namespace uh, modular application structure with namespaces and nested namespaces, as we'll see in a moment. Um, but the basic functionality, uh, the default is to just list all the names in the current namespace. And in contrast to quad NL, which simply lists them vertically or, uh, for that well, can be a text matrix that goes down or it can be a nested vector that goes across if you use negative uh, name class numbers. Names will put your output in a slightly nicer view with an appropriate number of columns for your print width. 
and it's just a bit easier to visually scan this. You can also group the names by name class. So I provided a, the argument zero, number zero there, and that groups the names by name class. Um, it's actually just a shorthand for IOTA 9, or all the uh, name classes, because if you specify some numbers, then you can choose to only display names of those name classes. So these are three and four, that's functions and operators in the utils uh, workspace that we've copied in. You can also view the names in a specific namespace or, you know, in a namespace that you reference. So that will be relative to the current namespace. I mean, you could provide, you can use a hash dot and provide a full namespace path. But what you'll notice is that what you get back is a list of names with the dot notation giving you a relative namespace path that you can then use. Well, it's a bit more convenient to use. So you could hover over them and inspect the contents or double click these names and open an editor or move the text cursor and use shift enter to open an editor on any of these names. And there's also some filtering uh, capabilities. Use, you know, a basic wildcard. So a single question mark means that's one character, but it can be any character before T-R-E-E. -E. Or with an asterisk, it's zero or more characters after this text or in that position where the asterisk is. In this case, it's after disp. And if you need a bit more fine grain control, you can use regular expressions as well. And of course you can combine all of these features. So here we're asking for variables inside the namespace called notes, uh, which begin with any characters, but end with tree. Okay, next, uh, Apple cart. This is the Apple cart is the searchable idiom library online. So you basically provide uh, plain English language descriptions of what you want to do approximately, or perhaps keywords in the particular domain of what you're trying to do. Um, but you might not know exactly how to approach it or whether there might be uh, an already established APL expression to do this and it will return some results which are, you know, idioms to do what you want, hopefully. Uh, and if there's something in that's not in there, uh, you can you can submit content requests and stuff to hopefully make it as useful as possible. But until now, you've had to, you know, laboriously copy and paste expressions into your workspace um, with this user command you can display the results of Apple cart queries directly in the session. So then you can literally go up, uh, modify that line. Uh, if you're just experimenting, add the arguments that you need, um, or, you know, just copy it straight into your code as you need. That's mainly useful. I'd say if you, uh, you know, mostly know what you're looking for, or in particular, you know that what you're looking for is in Apple cart. You just can't quite remember the expression, um, but you know how to find it. Uh, so you just want to get it there ready. I think I've used this numerous times typing leading trailing spaces, um, when doing text processing and stuff, but sometimes, you know, you're not sure what's in there and you still want to have a browse. So there's a shortcut to open Apple cart in your browser. Um, or if you prefer have just an HTML renderer pop up and you can keep that by the side, uh, as you're working.
Okay. Then there's Repper, which is short for represent and even shorter for representation. You basically provide uh, an APL expression and Repper will give you a representation of that expression. Um, by default, it's a single line of APL, which evaluates to the result of the expression you gave it, which can be a name as well, um, including the name of a function, as we'll see, or I suppose an operator or other APL item. It's supposed to be very general purpose, right? But there are other formats as well that you might find useful, such as the kind of uh, in development pre-release APL array notation. It's currently like an APL model and it's used in link. Um, and, you know, it's been talked about a lot uh, in recent years, but if you, you know, want an easier way to get a foothold in uh, to seeing what different APL arrays look like in APL array notation, then this is a really convenient way to do that and to learn about it and see if you find it useful yourself. There are also uh, a couple of formats that are probably you know quite useful these days um, with people working with uh, web applications a lot, sending data over the internet and having to use JavaScript. Um, yeah, you can represent APL arrays as JavaScript with this or, you know, the sli closely related, slightly stricter JSON. There is also an XML representation, which I'll show, you know, I'm going through the formats now, I'll show examples uh, in a moment, and you'll see what I mean. As well as the very popular comma separated values and its cousins, semicolon separated, pipe separated, and tab separated values. So by default, Repper will um, give you the representation as text in your session log for any of these formats, but you can also provide a file path and uh, spit out the output to a file, which I guess probably mostly useful for what the JSON, JS, and APLAN, APL array notation formats, but uh, you know, Use it as you see fit. So yeah, Repo, uh, one thing I actually use it quite a lot for is you get the result of some expression or the contents of some variable, or, um, the output of some function, and either you haven't, you know, set your display up, uh, your boxing in the way to make this work, or you don't really want to, or even if you do have max boxing on, you can't exactly see what the uh, structure or exactly what the output is. So in this case, we have our mystery variable and uh, this plus means it's a mixed type array and we can see that it's a simple vector, but it doesn't actually tell you which one is the numeric one and which one is the character one. Repper, on the other hand, returns an APL expression, which is you know, guaranteed to uh, evaluate to the same value as the expression you gave it. Also, if you're learning uh, tacit programming, this could be quite useful because if you provide um, a tacit expression, particular, in particular a train, uh, it will parenthesize the carriages of that train in a way that makes it a bit uh, easier for for beginners to discern or even anyone if you have some more complex train something a bit longer like this with lots of a tops um, and a, is it a top upon a top or is it pure fork well we're about to find out the other thing worth mentioning is if you provide a function name then what you get back is an APL expression, which when executed will define that function in your workspace. Okay, so it, so it is a fork, is it? 
Yep. Um, there you go. Okay, so yeah, so let's look at some more examples then. Um, this is a one row matrix and an APL ar uh, array notation. It has one row and that row has two elements. The first is one, one, and the second element is one, two. Like I say, play with this if you want to get more of a feel for how, for how uh, the array notation looks and, and works. And this is a function name. As I said, in the default APL mode, then it returns, in this case, a quad FX expression, which when you evaluate it, will define this function in the workspace. Uh, you might see some clues based on the spacing though, that will become clearer now. If you use the APL array notation mode, it can, uh, you know, if it needs to, use multiple lines. And for example, this could be output to uh, an APLF file and uh, imported using link, for example. And I've talked a bit about namespaces, but here's, um, you know, actually defining one, at least the contents of a namespace. So it has a sub namespace and a one element vector in APL array notation. That's quite a nice uh, visual display. And also um, I think it's long been said that the APL array notation might provide a really nice way to write function calls where that function might take a namespace full of options, uh, sort of name value pairs. So halfway house to a dictionary but providing you know that same feel for those types of option arguments i'm oh, sorry just leave that for a moment for you to see yeah okay um and as i've mentioned so js for example you know you could be you're an APLer, but you're having to work on some web application stuff or developing developing something that has to talk to other APIs or, or JavaScript or whatever, you might, because you're an APLer, find it much easier to generate some sample data or some constants that you need um, to generate that data using APL, and then you can just convert that straight into uh, valid JavaScript or JSON as you need. And um, it's just worth pointing out a couple of the key differences, which are just that uh, JavaScript allows you, you know, these are both a valid JavaScript technically, but the one that is not JSON allows you to have uh, trailing commas, which is very convenient for copying and pasting uh, to build up an object or a list. Um, and also you don't have to quote the member names. So you might find one of these preferable to the other, depending on your use case. So one other thing that the JSON mode of repr is quite nice for, um, quad JSON has variant options to change, you know, by default, it's kind of one line compact um, which is often desirable for, you know, code that you kind of set and it's just always like that. So it's perhaps faster to load or, you know, you're not going to need to edit it too much. Um, but you can have compact zero, which is a bit more human readable, but unfortunately, um, it will sort of lay out individual elements vertically and so that can become really quite long and not as easy to read um, and you also have to use another variant option to split high rank arrays if if you're trying to turn a matrix into a nested list um, although obviously you can split that but maybe you've got something higher rank i don't know but repa does all that for you and also it's multi-line um, json output is a bit more pleasant to read 
to keep things. I don't know what exactly the rules are, but uh, you can see that those individual lists within the nested list are each on their own line, which is obviously a bit more readable. As I mentioned, there is an XML representation. Quad XML will eat this, for example. Uh, but obviously, whatever you have on the other end that consumes this XML is going to have to have all the business logic to interpret the meaning. Uh, Quad XML cannot do that for you. Um, and this also cannot divine meaning for you. So it tries its best to give a representation um, of APL arrays as valid XML, but uh, yeah. And for completeness, you know, I don't think there's any surprises here. CSV, semicolons, etc. So, um, yep, those are these. Those are the new user commands for uh, inspecting the output in quite useful ways for debugging, especially if you have a lot going on. Um, names is just a, a pleasant way to view the contents of a workspace. Um, I should give a shout out to bracket map, uh, but if you have loads of names, then that is still uh, quite long and a little bit cumbersome um, in terms of visually scanning it. Apple cart is very convenient. I've been using that and repper as well. And as I said, uh, the next one is get. There is, oh yeah, I should also remind you and myself that for any of these user commands, um, you can see the help with uh, minus quest, uh, dash question mark. And uh, you can also use the bracket help user command. So you can use bracket help bracket view to see the help for that. And you can even use bracket view, bracket help, bracket view, um, if you want to see the help for the view user command in a view window. But that's all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, as always, as should have been mentioned, if you're watching on dialogue.tv, um, I think Adam is in there fielding questions and he can forward those to me as well while I wait to see if there are any I suppose I will mention yes in four weeks uh, Adam will be explaining the well not just the get user command basically you know there are lots of different ways to get code and data into the workspace from various different sources from workspaces and text files and the internet um, and get basically wraps all that in a very convenient user command so he'll be exploring all those different ways or many of them as well as demonstrating get that's in four weeks time on May 12th next week will be the next uh, British APL Association open session webinar and then every two weeks thereafter. And otherwise there are actually a bunch of things going on, so many that uh, I'm not listing them all here. If you want to see, there are things happening now all across the world on some regular basis, some less regular, um, but you can go to apl.wiki forward slash activities to see what you can participate in uh, in the world of APL. So apparently there are no questions, so and all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. See you next time.